So this is like my third man cave. We've moved twice this year. So I don't really deck it out as much as I used to. But um, it's a nice place. I got like six desks posted out here. Hope you guys are doing good for the holidays. Just thought I would do a video. Kind of update you guys on everything. You know, I got a kid now. Six months old. Tomorrow. Wow. And I'm married too. My natural America. You know, whew. It's funny, but I never accumulated as much money as I did once I got married. If you find the right partner, that's the key. You got to find somebody who's humble, doesn't spend a lot. You know, actually, when I met my wife, I, I moved in with her uh, in 2019. I had a condo granted, but at the time, all I had was a contract with CRO with uh, Crypto.com for like 3 k a month. But she was working two jobs. So I stayed home making a breakfast and stuff and she went to work for these two jobs and I was doing videos. If you see some of the videos I did back in the day with like the coffee maker in the background, those from her, her apartment. And uh, she never said a thing about it. She worked her ass off and she, in one of the jobs she worked in a warehouse. So I knew like this is this kind of woman you need. The opposite of me. Sometimes you need the opposite of you. You know, and I know she was beautiful. She's perfect, you know, and she just, I don't know, she's, she wasn't emotionally unstable. She's reliable. And the things that I'm like, mm, I didn't like about it because she don't let me do this. In the end, they're good for me. She's good for me. And, uh, yeah, dude, we just made a good team. And from that apartment, we uh, took a mortgage on a little townhouse for 120k then I started a business doing plaques then I invested the profits from that literally like I kid you not and I can go in more in depth we're making these plaques from Etsy and I took 100k we made from that did import from China on plates for weights made 1.2 million November 2020 and folded that into another company, another company. Now I got two e-commerce companies doing six figures each. Um, just insane because I never actually did e-commerce before. I was, you know, I did consulting, did other things, then did crypto, YouTube. And you hear all these people talking about, oh, e-commerce is great, you know. And uh, I don't know, I just did it my way. That's the thing. I did it my way. And I got an Amazon store and I sell Amazon shit. But not like those people tell you. I did it my way. And I don't know. So this is my life now. You know, I wake up. What do I do when I wake up? Um, well, I'll give you guys a tour, dude. This house is amazing. I got an 80-inch TV in my bedroom. And the bedroom is huge. My bedroom is so huge that the 80 inch TV, I was mad because I'm like, it's what's worth. It's 80 inches, but it's so far from the bed that it's not even. So anyway, I wake up. My Well, my wife is still up with the kids sometimes. But she passes me the kid. She goes, takes a shower. Then we swap back. I come up here, answer emails, customer service. If you know anything about dealing with 3PLs and Shopify, Amazon. It's a lot of customer service involved. And all kind of logistical challenges. It's like crazy. If you're trying to get into importing, there are tons of things that I wish I knew at the time. And this isn't like some ploy to get a course going. I would tell you guys if you're interested in hearing, but it is a shit show working with 3PLs and warehouses, trucking companies. You... It, it's invaluable to have people you trust that deliver this crazy shit. Like you have a contract with FedEx to pick up shit and they refuse to pick up your stuff because FedEx has dedicated routes where the owners own the routes and they just won't pick it up. So sometimes it's better to go with Amazon. Like I said, I have a whole shipping station here. You guys might notice that's a label maker. 
But yeah, if you're doing small time things and you want to try a product, ship it from home, then you get a 3PL. So far, I, I like ShipBob. I've also used um, FlowSpace, but FlowSpace is kind of, yeah, you know. I also have friends and, and partners that have their own warehousing, and that's just, you know, it's just one of those things. I don't know if you guys know about this business, but I thought about going to New Jersey. The best place is start a warehouse, New Jersey, Pennsylvania area around New York or San Jose, Los Angeles, California. You probably might get away with like, what is it? Um, what's Florida? What's the town? It's not St. Petersburg, but the one on the other side. Oh, I don't know. What's the name of that town? Anybody help me? You probably shot it already. Not St. Petersburg, but it's Tallahassee. It's the port town on that side of Florida. Anyway, I'm not going to waste my time anymore. But yeah. Mm. I can't believe brain fart. Oh my God. Oh. Anyway. So that's that. I mean, it's fucking insane. Importing is not that hard. You find People think, oh, you find something on Alibaba. And I heard some advertising about drop shipping. Oh yeah, it gets people to drop ship from Alibaba. I'm like, oh Marona. That's a good way to bankrupt your company. Because that shipping time, a month, six weeks, eight weeks to deliver, those people are gonna charge back you. And then you get enough chargebacks that's gonna fold your whole account. Don't do that shit. Import it, get it, you ship it, or have a 3PL ship it when you have it. You know. I made the mistake with first importing company where it was like two weeks out, like it's coming into the port or it was in the port. So I said, well, I'll go ahead and pre-sell so I can use that money to order more stuff. And then it gets delayed a month in the port. This was during COVID and that, well, you can probably read about that online. They're calling me an asshole. But I'm telling you, like, people calling me a scammer or an asshole online, they just don't understand the challenges that you face and we face during COVID. I'm not trying to say any excuses, but I just did the best I could. Did I make bad choices? I mean, I could outline my choices, the things that I did. They were reasonable at the time. But then everything snowballs and it goes in your... You know what I mean? So anyway, you know... You just got to learn from it, do the best you can, move on, and that's it. That's the thing about business. It's not personal. You know, it's, it's a shit show out there. It's a shit show. And the thing is that anybody fucks up in your line and you're the person to blame. And when you're shipping shit, you have a long line of people that you have to rely on. So make sure you trust them. Don't give the job of 3PL or transportation, or manufacturing to the first Tom, Dick, and Harry. Make sure you trust them, because if they fuck up in the end, you're the one that's getting the chargeback. And chargebacks are a, a hell of a, that's the major, that's the major deal. You get a couple of counts shut down, and you're done. Anyway, that's, that's my two cents this time. Tell me what you guys think. If you want to hear more, uh, Hit me up and I'll do another video. Merry Christmas, everyone.